<laughs> it, oh, the it's puppy so slept in, so we let it sleep to see how long it would sleep. And then I said, no, we got to go take her out. But she would have stayed in bed all day, I think, today. Morning, Dave. Morning, Ron. Morning. Morning. <clears throat> Hi, so uh, this is what we're going to tie. It's Boys, that's a powerful the, fly. It's called the Max Flash. It's out of the flies of the Northwest. The only it's like a cardinal. Okay, I'm going to yep. mute so that we default to you. Yeah. So the only thing that I've done differently here is in, it, it calls for a purple floss body, which I didn't have purple floss with a rib. But what I did have is this stuff. Uh, and I figure in it's micro dub, uh, yeah. micro in UV, and I figured that would give it the same kind of flash as what that pattern in the book was. So we start off with uh, a debarbed salmon fly hook. This one is a Daiichi, uh, but a Mustad makes them. This is a size four. Now, the proper steelhead fly is, uh, is on a bigger hook, like a two or, or bigger, but I figured that if you tie in this, you can use it. What? Steel nope. fly By the, or a coho fly. I'll go get it for you. Just hang on. So there's the hook. I hope you can all see it with the contrast that's here. I'm just going to adjust this in here a bit. And uh, I tied, tied, tied it using a dot, but uh, it takes a long time to build a head with eight odd, so I'm going to use six odd. I'm tying in right behind the the eye, and these salmon fly hooks they're they're not a circular formed eye. Um, you can see that they have it's sort of a bent over wire to form the eye. So you got double wire for a little bit of back at the front of the hook. Um, I'm going to dress this back, keep a little bit of thread on the hook so that things don't spin too bad. And I'm going to take it right back to tie in the tail. I'm going to take it back, not quite to the point of the hook. Got something in there. So I'm going to leave it a little shy at the point. And that's where I'm going to tie. I don't think that what happened there. I got a little bit of fuzz in there. And then the tail is uh, orange saddle. Um, there's fibers off of it. Uh, I also that that I had like two of these feathers, <laughs> but I have an entire neck of these guys, so I'm going to use these guys. A little more, a uh, little darker orange, and so that's a grizzly hackle dyed orange. Yes, it is. Yeah, I forget why I got that hackle. It was, I think it was one of Howard. Um, oh, for. I was making them last year at Roach. Um, Buster Browns. Ah, so I just get it so I've got a few fibers and then I'll grab those and pull them off one side and then flop the fiber over and line the tips up and pull them off the other side and bunch them together so I have a reasonable little bunch of fibers. And I'm going to measure the tail to be just to the tag end of the hook, tap back end of the hook band. So it doesn't go too far out the back. And a pinch wrap on top. And, and I'm going to just bind the loose ends down rather than, rather than cutting them off. And then I'm going to lift the tail up and put a single wrap of thread in behind and tug the thread forward and then wrap in front. And that makes the fibers stand up to the, to the back at an angle. So then we're gonna put the body on. 
So I come right up to the front of the hook where, it, where the wire is bent back. And I'm gonna take this uh, micro chenille and I'm gonna tie it in right there at the same point where the wire is wrapped back to so that it doesn't over go too far up front. And then I'll wrap it down the, the hook body to where the tail is tied in. And that just, again, provides a nice little base for wrapping this uh, stuff forward. Then I'm gonna bring my thread up to the eye of the hook in open spiral. And then I'm going to wrap this polar chenille around the, around the shank of the hook and fairly close wraps so that I end up with a, a pretty spiky body. And every once in a while, I give this micro chenille a bit of a twist and stroke some of the fibers back a bit to keep them from getting trapped too much. I'm going to take this uh, wrapped body all the way up to, again, where that doubled over wire is. And I'm going to take it halfway up the double overturned wire. And then I'm going to tie that. Excuse me down. for interrupting you, Dave. Could I, yeah. could Dave, Dave Clark, could you, or Dave, could you uh, mute yourself, please? Who's that? Dave, Dave. Yeah, he has Dave now, so we don't yeah. keep jumping the screen to him. Thanks. Thanks. So now I got to trim it off. So that's the body, and now we're going to tie on what makes the wing of this thing, which is. Uh, marabou plumes and it comes strung and I'm just gonna pull out uh, from the string batch here if I can find them I don't know. Now there's a fairly bulky marabou and that's too much. So I'm gonna strip it back here a bit, trying to find a reasonable quantity that's gonna look nice on the fly. Wet it down a bit. And then I'm gonna place my marabou where I'm gonna tie it in, right over top of the hook. And I'm gonna slide it forward till the wing is shy of the tail. I don't want it much more than, than the very tips of the marabou extending as far as the tail. Wrap over, a couple of wraps like that. Lift it up and a couple of wraps in front to lock it down. And then to keep from getting too fat ahead on this thing, I'm going to pull the marabou up at about a 30 degree angle from the shank. I'm going to lay my scissors down right on top of the shank and trim it. And that leaves a bit of a, a taper to the marabou. So there's the purple. And then next piece is this stuff, which is a uh, pink. And this one, I don't need a whole lot of it. It's just a contrasting color. So I'm gonna pull some off the side of that plume. Guess at how much I need. And I'm gonna measure that again, where the thread is. I got my thread back right where I tied in the other marabou. And I'm going to 
place this on the hook so that it's just a little shorter than the first batch of purple. And I'm gonna tie that down the same way. One, two, three, and then a wrap in front. Again, hold it up at a, about a 30 degree angle to the shank. Get my scissors in there and trim it tight to the, the head of the fly. The whole idea here is to make sure that that's secure, but it's not gonna make too bulky a head. And then back to the purple again. But before I do that, I need to put the flash in. So I'm gonna take a couple of strands of this blue crystal flash, and I'm gonna take one, fold it in half, cut it, and then I'm gonna wrap it around the thread from under backside underneath in half. Then I'm gonna bring my thread up and try and place this not right on the side, a little bit above the side, on the side of the head, and then wrap back over top of it a bit so that some of it comes out on the side and some on the, on the top. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the other one. Again, around the shank, around the thread, up, and this time I'm gonna put it on the far side of the hook. Up in there. Got a little knot there somehow, there we go. Right down on top, on the far side. I'm gonna stroke them back in place and Two little wraps there. So I've got some on one side of the hook and some on the other. And I'm gonna come in and trim them just a hair past where the bear blue goes. And then I've got some purple of the same stuff. This purple, purple one is, is uh, it's crystal flash, but it, it's quite a bit finer for some reason than the other one much finer material. So I'm gonna do two strands on each side this time, because it's really quite wispy, that stuff. Again, fold them in half, trim it, fold it in half around the thread. And then these guys are gonna go on the top this time. And then another pair. Fold it in half. And then wrap them around the thread, if it will go. And again, replacing them on the top, but slightly on the far side. So the first one is slightly on the near side on the top and that one's on the far side. Wrap them back. And again, trim them about the same length as the other guys. So I got lots of flash. Now the, the way you've done that, the, the bottom part of the marabou uh, gives you that contrast and it also supports the flash from dragging down on the bottom. And then the last bit is another piece of marabou. I'm gonna try and find one of these prunes out of here. This is one gaudy fly. That's the point. Yeah, it is. It is. Actually, actually they're not dissimilar to like a lot of uh, 
West Coast flies. Yeah. With a lot of cower in them, like uh, for steelhead. Yeah. I used them for salmon. Salmon. East Coast salmon back home when the when we got a big flood of rain, and they really worked well, especially that cardinal. So now, now we got again. You you got to sort of pick the number of marabou fibers to to give you a little cover here. And again, I'm I'm going to make that just a little shorter than the previous one. Feed towards the back. Tie it down. And lift the front. Make sure it's in place. It's all around. And again, hold this at the angle and cut it right close. Now you end up with a lot of fluff floating around in the house, so make sure you have a vacuum handy. <laughs> and then the last thing is, now I didn't do that on the previous uh, versions, but this one, the way the pattern says, you're supposed to put a purple saddle on it. Now, I'm gonna measure the saddle so it doesn't go, I'm just gonna use the bottom part of it here. And I'm not gonna put much in the way of a, a hackle on it. I wanna get that marabou tied down first. So now tie the saddle on by the butt. Lock it in. And I'm going to fold this back as I wrap, and I'm probably not going to get more than two wraps. And here I was thinking you couldn't get any more bling. <laughs> Off, trim, and I'm going to stroke all these fibers back and build a head. This is where the slightly thicker thread helps. So I'm if one more bling, bling and weight, you can put a um, you can put a cone head on these things. Yeah, if you're tying them on big, this is a little hook. Hook is a little small for that. But if you're doing it on a size one knot or something, I think you're right. You could add some weight with a cone head. Yeah, I mean, I have smaller cone heads too. I would I would easily put a put a cone head on that size even. And I do a double whip finish on this just for the heck of it. Because those big heads, I think you, the extra wraps help. Keep it tight. So now I just stroke it up a bit so you can see. So because I picked a nice hackle, it doesn't go back to the hook point. You can see this, the flash is still in the middle and the pink contrast. Contrast is in there. And the last thing I do is a little Sally Hansen's hard as nails right on that head to make it shiny black. And to, uh, to keep from uh, having the eye blocked, I'm just going to take the remains of the saddle and I'm going to run it through the eye and that sucks up the extra glue and leaves the eye open and there you go 
Nice gaudy fly. I'm I used to find they were good if you pulsated them through the water. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the point of, of doing multiple stacks of, of marabou because they each one supports the other so that they will they will breathe like that. Here, here's you a know picture. A trick for finishing the head. If you if you don't have a rotary vise with a rotary vise, this isn't going to work. But if you have a non rotary vise, if you turn the vise a little bit, then your hook point is pointing upwards. So when you mm -hmm. put your glue, hard as nails, whatever you put on, it's just going to nicely flow downstream. So you won't have to yeah. even bother cleaning the cleaning the eye afterwards. But I got I got lots of bits of stuff floating around here yeah, yeah. that I can put through the eye to clean that up. But it does generate a lot of fluff. <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> Here's so a picture her. of a cardinal, which is similar, John. And I've caught a lot of fish with this particular fly. In fact, I retired this fly because it caught four or five fish and it's all beaten to death, but uh, you can see how similar they are. Mm -hmm. So is it like the same thing, just different colors? Yes, it has a, an orange body. Oops, where are we? A pink behind it, although it's all worn out. Some crystal flash and purple marabou, and then a yellow collar. And I always thought, well, I've experienced, with a collar, they always catch more fish because mm. it blocks the water better and it allows the, you fish it like this, pulsate it. Yeah. People that drag it through the water didn't seem to catch any fish, but if you let it pulsate it, you let it, pull it, let it drip, pull it, and have let, it works the marabou feathers. Mm. Mm. So that one Dave has would really work well. Yep. So I'm, I'm hoping to, to try this on some cutthroat and maybe uh, on the steelhead in the couch in it at some point and see what works. I think it's supposed to be like a shrimp. I think it's just provokes the action. Yeah. <laughs> It's the movement and the color contrast, I think, just provoke. Hey, question. Uh, could you use like fox fur instead? Instead of? Instead of the marabou. Yeah, that, that's, um, where is it here? Because this one fox here has a tendency, it, it flares really nicely in the water. Well, this is the uh, purple peril, which a buddy of mine used to, to tie and fish a lot up on the Kispiaks. Mm -hmm. And and it's a again a, a purple body with a rib and a little bit of purple uh hackle underneath. But the wing is is deer hair. And it's a short wing. I've 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 He's caught bored by that fly. in the Atabasca with uh with streamers tied with uh with a bit of a deer hair wing mm. actually and they look they look like this, actually. Uh, oh, sorry. Can't show you. Uh, yeah, something like this. Just mm -hmm. ordinary black chenille, deer hair, and a bit of a bit of flash of in that sort of bluish bluish color thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it works well. And it's about, I think this is about a size four hook. That's like what were you catching hook. on that, Lauren? Bull trout. Okay. It worked well. What we called Dolly Varden. Yeah. What happened was I was I was trailing on top of the water. I had like a stimulator or something with a big uh, elk wing, and the bull trout came up to it. And then I thought, oh, wait a second, I can do this in a streamer. And then I just set a device and hooked up something. And that's what, uh, that's what, what came out of it. And it, it does work. And then I tried, you know, ver variants of this, but it's, you know, 
similar idea. Different, uh, yeah. different chenille here, you know, with a bit of sparkle in it and stuff. And then uh, I added a hot spot in front of this to see if it works. I haven't tried this version yet. So the, uh, you know, the name of the bull trout that, that we used to call him Dolly Parton, you know where that name came from? Yeah, there was something with uh, fancy, fancy hats and stuff. No, it was a, a it was a Scottish prostitute who used to wear a speckled skirt. <laughs> was that? Ver yeah, okay. What's well, named named after a hooker? <laughs> well, I guess if you want to name a hooker, you you better name a fly. <laughs> I, and here's anyway. another another version I haven't tried, but I don't see why it wouldn't. Uh, why it wouldn't work uh, like this. This is some of that synthetic hair stuff with a bit of uh, flashaboo in it just, mm. at some angles it disappears, at some angles it flashes. So I'm thinking this should work. I hope to find out. There you go. So now we go from the ridiculous to the sublime. <laughs> Arn's going to do some English wets. Yeah, so uh, I guess the, the previous flies, you know, you look at them and you, you could think, hmm, the fish would, would hit them because they're traditionalists and they just, they can't stand the, the sight of all that flash stuff. So this is kind of like uh, going in the opposite direction here. The first pattern is going to be purely natural materials. Um, the second one almost. Okay, so I was doing these things in uh, and actually in the smaller in the smaller sizes. I'm doing a. Uh, in this particular case, I'm doing this on a size 16. This is a standard dry fly hook, uh, 98, 480, uh, Mastad. Um, some people have a strong preference for uh, straight-eyed hooks. Uh, they're a bit more challenging to, to find. Daichi makes, makes a hook that, that fits that description. You can go here pretty much with anything you like. Okay, so the ingredients are very basic. Um, silk thread and partridge. There's nothing else needed here. So begin by building a little thread body. So start at the head and wrap backwards. I could start at the at the bend. It depends. Like a, I'm I'm trying to do a double wrap here. Otherwise, the the hook would show through a little bit too much and lose some of the color. Anyway, these things are tied skinny and sparse. You don't want to bulk things up at all. Okay, and go leave a little bit of room for a head about a hook, hook eye length. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a prepared partridge feather. I like to, when I tie flies, I like to prepare things ahead of time. So how would you prepare the partridge feather? Well, the idea is the following. You look at the neck of the partridge for something that has fibers that are short enough for the hook size you're, you're working with. So on this size 16 hook, you want something where you're matching, what, what you're trying to match in length here is the length of the shank of the hook. Let me pull 
pull out a little feather here. So here's, here's a little feather off the neck. And now what I'm going to do is the following. So first of all, take the fluff off. So that's the, uh, the standard thing that you would do with, with, with any feather. So get the fluff at the base so you can actually see where the good stuff begins. Okay, and as you can see, the stem already broke in the process. So when you do this, you have to be really, really careful. The second thing I'm going to do with this feather is I'm going to strip one side to achieve that nice um, sort of sparse look on the fly. Now, the hackle is going to be and will end up being tied on top of the hook with the pointy end facing forward and the concave side up. So I'm going to be wrapping this backwards, holding the feather by the tip. So if I want to get half of the hackle off, it's going to have to be the hackle on the far side pointing away from me. So in this case, this side goes off, right? So if you're holding the feather towards, towards you like this, it would be in this guy, in this case would be the left side and the concave side of the feather is pointing towards you. So I'm just having it facing the camera now. Okay. Now, when you do this, the other thing is it's very easy to split the stems on these, on these hackles. So you don't want to pull lengthwise. You want to put, to pull as much as possible as close to a right angle to get the fibers off the hackle. So here's now the hackle prepared, right? And then you look on this side and you decide whether you're satisfied with the length of these fibers relative to the hook shank and this looks reasonable, okay? It's almost on the short side. So then you tie this thing on top at the point where you left the, the thread hanging couple of turns back and then trim the butt, okay? All right, and now this is the only technical step in tying this fly and it simply involves wrapping this without breaking the stem of the hackle. Now attach carefully here at the top with rotary hackle pliers that makes life easy and start winding like any regular hackle, but just go backward, okay? So your hackle now wraps perpendicular to the hook shank, and then you, you try to put your wraps one behind the other, and you start to get, you don't have to do anything, you don't have to stroke the feathers back or anything, you just kind of watch out what you're doing, and then, when you reach the end, so a couple of turn, turns is about all you're gonna get out of a partridge feather this small. Take the thread and start to wiggle it through the hackle going forward. And if you do this wiggling, what you're gonna end up with is your fibers are not going to be, for the most part, not going to be pushed forward. When you've got your thread to the front, then all you do is give the hackle pliers a yank. Nah, it didn't work. <laughs> Back to the drawing board. Just grab that hackle tip and just pull because this thing is so fragile that it'll, it'll just break off. So you don't have to even bother getting the, the scissors in there. So this is basically the fly now, it just needs to be finished. I'm going to pull these fibers back. I don't want to wrap over them. So now you have to be really careful when you're finishing the head to not go and cover any of the hackle fibers. So they, they keep standing up, okay? And then a couple of whip finishes is going to build up your head very lovely. So here we go. Okay. 
one whip finish even on the small flies i do two whip finishes because i don't like to use the glue stuff i only use the glue stuff on big streamers and stuff where the the head is exposed uh, pretty pretty seriously okay and this is this is the fly it's a partridge and orange uh, you can vary the uh, you can vary the color traditionally this is done with the with a gray gray hackle but you can see if you look carefully at the partridge skin you've essentially got choices here you got uh, this this is the neck is breaking off but you got both brown hackles and and gray hackles so you can you can do this with a browner um, shade if you like I have a olive dyed skin you can use that instead uh, the other stand, standard colors for this are yellow um, and the green okay so it's a it's a simple one the other alternative is to add a little bit of so this is the skinniest sparsest version of it uh, the other thing you can do is you can put just like a, an idea of a thorax before you put on the hackle so you know, just a little bit of uh, dubbed hairs here is uh, is all that's necessary here. You don't need uh, you don't need more than that. Okay. All right. So this is fly number one, and fly number two is the Stuart spider. So this is the black spider. This also comes in a few uh, color color variants. The black is supposed to be the best one. It's both a lake and a stream fly. And it's going to go on the same size hook. Now I'm switching. Um, you can do this with uh, Pearsall's brown thread. But in this case, I'm just going to switch to uh, Uni 8 Aught. And same thing, do a little underbody of thread. Actually, this is going to be the body of the fly. So it's again, a, a thread and hackle kind of pattern. Okay, so go back and then go back to the front behind the hook eye. Now this calls for starling. Okay. And you don't need a dyed skin, you just need a natural skin with the pretty feathers on it. And what you want is one of these body feathers with the gloss and the nice little colorful tip. Okay. Now starlings, starling feathers are, are pretty small, so you can go, you know, you can go with a relatively, relatively big feather here. Um, let me see something nice. Uh, these are a little stronger than the partridge. Okay, so here's the here's the starling feather. You can see it's only the tip of it that has got any any usable anything. So again, strip the fluff. In this case, you don't have to worry too much about things because the stems of the the stems of the starling are pretty tough stuff. Okay, and again, to achieve so this this would be the full feather, and if you want to achieve that same kind of you know minimalistic uh, look, you strip the same side of the feather as you would with a partridge. Okay, so this is the, the stripped feather. And then you put it on top of the hook. Again, same orientation, same everything. And now you wind the thread back, but more like a third to a half. Given how small the starling hackle is, you can't really go halfway if you had a if you had a hen hackle 
uh, for this. Instead, you could, uh, you could probably try to go a little bit further back. Again, rotary, hackle pliers, and then start winding backwards, the same technique. Whoops, slippery, slippery. Reattach here. So kind of go back. And again, just put the A. Okay. Guess I'm pulling a little too hard. So spiral backwards, you know, you want you want open turns. Man, this is Okay, let's see, third time lucky. So what I'm trying to achieve now is more of an open turn rather than a tightly wound hackle. So I want some space here between these wraps. As you can see, they're not like tight behind one another. Okay, so I've managed to to make it almost halfway up the up the shank here. And the same idea, wind your your thread by wiggling it between the hackle. Now this one, the yanking trick I showed you earlier definitely will not work. So what you want is slide your scissors in there and cut. Okay? Notice here at the front, I've got a pesky fiber sticking out. Um, I can try to, to push it back with a thread, but that won't look very good. So I'm going to get tweezers and pluck it off. By the way, tweezers are a very handy tool to have if you're crazy about how your flies look. And uh, I have to be crazy about how my flies look because when I discover when I tie on the screen, this is magnified so much that I can see every little boo-boo. So I really have to, to do this. First time I saw somebody uh, tying with tweezers in hand actually was uh, AK Best. And uh, that guy is a maniac for detail. So I thought, hmm. You know, I try not to be, but sometimes that it just looked to me like a good idea. So now again, do the same thing. Nice little whip finish here. This is going to build the head for the fly. And close the knot. Trim, done, okay? So again, this is a, like a little bit of black nothing with the dark brown thread. If you want it uh, to be a beefier fly, you would just use a whole, whole feather without, without stripping, um, stripping one side. And that's it, there are, there are color variations on this where essentially the, the color of the hackle um, changes and the challenge is to get something like a like a red cock hackle um, in the uh, in the appropriate um, shade of you know like a fiery brown kind of thing and if you want smaller sizes that's not an easy thing to get your hands on so that's it these are the uh, these are the two flies and if we have time I can probably do one of these uh, dubbed body ones. Shall I do the green one as well? Good with me. Sure. So, so Florin, have you uh, taken those down to the Beaumont pond and tried them out there? The green ones? No, I just tied them last night. Uh, well, you have to try any of those small patterns uh when the fisher lion dogo they they get that midge hatch little teeny midges and uh oh the black ones yeah yeah 
A partridge and orange is something that's pretty good in a, like in a caddis hatch, for example. So here I'm going with the, with the bigger, heavier wire. So I get to, I get to play with more, more dubbing material. So this is a gigantic, of course, size 10 hook with a heavy wire. And I'm just going to use the same eight aught brown, brown thread. I suppose I could use a matching kind of a lime green um, thread or fluorescent chartreuse or, or something like that to keep, to keep that, that particular theme, but whatever. I don't think it matters much. All right, where's my dubbing? There it is. Now for the fun part, um, I, sh I showed you this, this material earlier. Now the, the thing is that this comes in very long wispy uh, fibers. So it's, it's just a challenge to, to pull out kind of the, the right amount. As you can see, I just end up with a, with a bunch of very unruly uh, mess. And let me try to get this on the, onto the thread. Okay, so just spin it like any, any dubbing. I'm trying to build in a bit of a taper. Let's see. Once it catches on the hook, then it's, it's fairly easy because those, the length of the fibers kind of keep it, keeps everything up. See, I left a little bit of brown there at the end and I don't like that sort of look. Okay. So then keep wrapping. This does not give a, a fuzzy body, just gives us fairly smooth one. And here I am close to the end. If I want just maybe just a touch more. I can break off just a little bit here to cover everything up. And then go this time, just go for a big, uh, for a big feather on, the, on this size. Ah, that should do. Again, that's a big mess. All this fluff and my skin is very brittle, so it just it, everything breaks off, even patches of skin. Okay, and now I'm going to again this being a fairly large feather, I'm going to try to strip down some more. You'll have to get an humidifier for your skins. Yeah, well, this is an old skin that's been with me for 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 a long time and. Remember when they used to put mink coats in the coolers? I think they still do. There, there used to be a place here where uh, I, I've seen it advertised on the window, you know, bring in your fur coats for storage. I don't know if anybody wears a fur coat anymore, but uh, there you are. Call them up and ask them if you could hang your skins. <laughs> uh, I guess it'd be cheaper to just buy a new skin. Um, so, another so, piece of uh, advice I read, but I haven't had really big problems with, with breaking the stems, is to pinch the stem with your fingernail a little bit at the tying point, just before you tie it on. So again, I'm just going to wrap this backwards the same way as the partridge and orange. Right, so I've just changed, essentially I just changed the size and the color and grab the grab the hackle with the pliers oh bad fibers ay 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 what am i doing here something twisted on me and i can't for the life of me tell what's going on okay we'll fix this later so just pull by hand to get things in the right orientation Wrap backwards, tight turns, one behind the other. 
and that's enough. Attach it, wiggle, go to the front and snip. No, it's not snipping today very well. Oh well. Okay, that's it. So you got to remember that uh, in Edmonton, when it's minus 40 outside, the relative humidity inside your house is like 20, which is why yep. things drop so much. Yeah, yeah, it's that. Now it's it's pretty humid. My my doors are not closing very well. It's uh, it's uh, that one month a year when it's like crazy. So yeah, do a couple of whip finishes to build up the head. I'll probably tie this big size you could tie with six sort thread and be totally fine. In fact, the uh, the silk thread, uh, the parasols is uh, is more like a like a six sort size than than the eight aught. So this is it. Not very very evenly distributed, but oh well. This is something that should work better once it gets mangled a bit. Okay, so that's um, three fairly traditional other than this acid green uh, thing, but still it's, it's natural silk. So I figure that's, uh, yeah, that's okay. So these are the, um, the simple, simple wet flies and they all share the same tackle wrapping technique. And once you learn this one, if you haven't tied this before, then the next complexity stage is to start to, uh, to add wings to these patterns. So I kind, of, I kind of did it a bit backwards, right? So the, the March Brown I did last week was essentially something like this, plus a wing, plus a tail. So, that's that's basically it. The uh, Florin, have you ever tried to substitute um, guinea fowl uh, for partridge? Uh, no, but I would think that I could only do that on bigger sizes. Yeah. Uh, but like, the gu guinea fowl is, is kind of black with white uh, dots on it. But by the time you wrap it, it looks a bit like partridge, I notice. Mm -hmm. Right, but I guess that would be like sizes six and up hooks, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, 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 do have a, I do have one of those skins that I just... I guess one day I just walked into the fly shop and it was like, hmm, this looks good. But I have to start tying some of those uh, steelhead flies or something to make use of yeah, it. Yeah, that's where they were, they're good. So, you know, it, it'll, it'll see its use. Um, maybe not yet. There isn't much steelhead in Alberta that I know of. Uh, I, yeah. I've I've tied them, but I haven't used them. <laughs> I've got a million flies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have some materials I haven't used yet. Like you know, the polar bear. It feels like using that on pike flies is uh, I don't know. Feels like a little bit of waste. Yeah, just, yeah. just for clousers. <laughs> you have to buy a trailer for your fries when you go fishing, eh? <laughs> uh, well, I, uh, you know, I get, I get teased enough for, uh, when I, when I, when I just pack to go fishing, basically, um, two people fill up completely, uh, Subaru Outback with the back seats folded down and most of the stuff is mine. And my dad looks at it and says, I don't have to tie flies. I don't, I can just forget all my gear at home. I don't need anything. You've got, you know, everything. So yeah, I've, I've, I've been told this before. I know, I know. 
There's nothing wrong with that. No, yeah. no, no, no. I know there's nothing wrong with that. And I actually, I read the articles about how to organize your fly time materials on occasion. Because I can't get back east and I had two calls and asked me if they could go to my cabin to get some salmon flies. Because <laughs> I left a lot of all my east coast stuff there. I left there and uh, they never tied flies. They were like your father. Why should I bother? Right? <laughs> Moving well, there was a guy, you know, like now that we've all been forced on, on, on Zoom, there is a guy uh, here in Edmonton. Um, it's, it's Emerson Dober. Oh, yeah. And uh, so you could see the, the, the background in his, uh, in his basement room where he, he ties flies. He has stuff on, on pegboards, you know, hanging on the wall. It looks like a fly shop. <laughs> we were teasing him. We we're saying, look, Emerson, you could, you could start doing a curbside pickup. <laughs> you know, everything was nicely organized. It looked like he had everything that you could possibly think of ever using. You know, it was, it was amazing. You have to remember, Emerson is a, a, a ex-contractor, so he is kind of anal about housekeeping. <laughs> well, my things are reasonably organized. I mean, I I do tend to uh, to to find my stuff, um, but it's uh, you know the most interesting idea I've seen about organizing was something like this: but just put your stuff in boxes just a bunch of boxes as long as they're sealed and you know bugs can get in and and ruin thousands of dollars of materials you're okay and then put a number on each box one two three four five whatever and then separately have a list of your materials and organize that whichever way you like alphabetically whatever you can have that in a spreadsheet and then for each specific material, put down the box number. They don't have to be organized by categories or anything. So you, you hire a librarian. The... <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> I said you hire a librarian. Well, that's pretty much, yeah, it's a librarian type of, um, type, type of job, yeah. And then you just, you know, you rummage in the, in, in the box, I guess if the boxes are not too big, this would work okay. If you have gigantic boxes, then forget it. Um, gents, I have to leave, unfortunately. Me as well. I will, I will uh, catch you up on Tuesday. Tuesday, yeah, for sure. Okay, yep. See you all on Tuesday. Yeah, yeah we'll see you. Yes, I, I gotta go too. It's market time. <laughs>